Today's video is this one, and I've noticed it's Simplicity 9110, but I've noticed when I order my patterns, a lot of times they come with a different pattern number on it. This one says R10497, and that's happened to me a couple times where the pattern number on here is not the pattern number that's in the book. So it's Simplicity 9110. It's a cropped pant or a skirt with an uneven hem. You can see it's longer at the sides than in the front and the back with patch pockets. One pocket is sort of um, a curvy U-shape and the other is just a traditional square patch. So we're gonna work on the pants today. You can do either pocket with it. I haven't decided for sure, but I kind of think I'm just gonna do the traditional patch for me. And let me show you the fabric I've chosen. It is this, and it is a herringbone stripe. Let me get close so you can kind of see. I really like it. It's very lightweight cotton, super soft. It feels almost like a ticking fabric and I think it's gonna look really cute. I'm, um, I'm not going to, you see they've trimmed their patch pocket in like a bias tape or something. I will not be doing that. My fullest part of my body is my hip area, my hip and thigh, and I want my patch pockets to kind of disappear and not be quite so obvious. It'll just be more slimming on my body. I've also already started doing some measurements, so I'm gonna take you over to the cutting table and show you some of the changes we're gonna have to make. The pant length um, as is, is ankle length on me. It comes all the way down to my ankles, which is longer than I want. I want it more mid-calf, probably a little shorter than is in the picture. So I'm going to alter that in the pattern before I ever cut it out. Saves me a little bit of fabric. And I also, most of the time, when I'm making pants, they're too long in the front and a little bit too short in the back. And that's just how my weight is distributed. I'm kind of flat and smaller in the front and I'm really full in the behind. And the way pants are made, they kind of, a lot of times, it's it's distributed a little more evenly so that when I pull my pants on in the front, I can like pull them all the way up here and the back's a little low. And if I try to redistribute it, then the pants don't hang right because the seam lines don't fall where they're supposed to. So we're gonna go make some alterations real quick in the other room. I'm gonna show you that and then we'll come back and sew this together. These are a pull on with elastic. So these, as far as the sewing, um, will go pretty fast. So let's go do some alterations. What I'm going to do when working with my pattern is determine if there's enough fabric, if the shape is right, in the front here and in the back. And there's two ways I'm going to do it. One way is to measure just the depth, which is this measurement here. And the other one is to measure the circumference or around, which is the actual measurement from belly button around to waistline from front to back. So I need both of those measurements and I need to know where the middle of the body is. So I need to know, I can make, take this measurement and it can be right, but it can have too much in the front or too much in the back and it'll make the pant hang wrong. So I really need to know where, how much of that needs to be in the front and how much of that needs to be in the back and this depth is right. Because that will also help me know, because what usually happens to me is when I put my waistband in, the front waistband is too high. Here's the belly button right there. The front waistband tends to come up like this and the back waistband tends to dip down. So I have this, this thing happening front and back, which is not what you want. From the side of the body, if you look at it, the front of the waist goes like, kind of does that. It ends up looking fine at the hem, but the waist is messed up. And what I want is a nice even straight waistline. So I'm going to go do some measurements and I'll show you over on the patterns. We're going to start with the back piece here. Here's my, the back pattern piece has all the sizes on it. And what I've done after taking my measurements is I've added to the back wing, it's the back crotch, and that's going to give a little more fullness in the rear end so you can see how much deeper it is now, which is what I need. And then I've just curved this back in to the leg, and you can see it already had some curve. Mine's a little deeper because that's what I need. The other thing I've done is um, I didn't cut this out on the exact sides because I knew I was wanting to add a little bit of width across the rear end hip. So I've added a full inch, which will give me two inches total just in the rear. And because of doing this measurement, I don't have to add any at the top up here at the waistband. So that's gonna work great. The thing I will need to do is make sure and add this to my waistband so that the waistband will go back on the way it needs to. 
So that's all the alterations I'm going to do in the back, other than I am going to shorten it a little bit. I don't want this length. It's a little too long, so that's, but that's an easy alteration just to shorten. In the front, the only alteration I made to the front is this. I've actually, after taking all the measurements, it's really long in the front for me. So I am reducing it by this much, which is about an inch and a quarter here. And then I've just eased that back up and I've allowed for seam allowance. So I've um, included my 5 8 inch here and my 5 8 inch here just to make it nice and easy. And so my easing is between the two 5 8 inch lines. That's the only change I've made to the front. Now, if you're different than I am and you are fuller in the front than in the back, if you have more of a tummy than you do a rear, and you decide to add to the front for yourself, make sure that you add to this pocket if you're choosing this pocket at the side too so that everything matches back up. There are two pockets. I decided to do the little cute UE shaped pocket. And there's two different ones in there. This side, the number six is the one for the pant, and the number two is the one for the skirt. And you can see that angle at the side, and that's for the sh skirt shaping. I'm probably gonna come back and make this skirt. It's really cute. Okay, I'm ready to cut out, and I'll see you back at the sewing machine. All cut out, and the very first thing we have to work on is our pocket. And the directions say to use a single fold bias tape. Move this pocket out of the way. And you're going to sew one end of the bias tape along your curve, fold it over, top stitch it down, and finish off this edge. Very simple to do. But let me tell you a secret. There's an even easier way to do it. Cut another set of pockets and self-line it. It gives you a prettier pocket. You don't have to worry about finishing off this edge because it's turned and stitched and looks pretty. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to line my pocket. Now you can do it two ways. You can self line it, which is great because it makes it more invisible, or you can line it with something like a nice satin or even a cute contrasting fabric. So I'm going to self line. I wanted to do it in a navy satin, but I just don't have, the only navy satin I have is for a project I haven't cut out yet. And I don't want to take a chance on not having enough because I cut giant pockets out of it. So we're going to self line today because I have plenty of fabric left over of this and we're going to do our pocket that way. However, just for your, um, for you, if you are not going to self line your pockets, open up a piece of bias tape, single fold, and you're going to stitch down along this edge all the way around. And then once that's stitched, this whole thing gets folded to the back like this and top stitch down. And that finishes off this curved edge. It's very easy. Now to do this outer edge, they have you, and I've done this in another video. I'll put the little thing up here um, in my blue shirt that I made for my mom. Um, uh, we did it on the hem. You run some basting stitches on this curvy edge and you pull them in to help turn this in to give you the nice shape for top stitching it down. Again, it's much easier just to do a self-lined pocket, which is what we're going to do. So I'll be back in just a second. I'm going to cut a second pair of pockets out and I'll show you how to do it. We're going to take our four pocket pieces, right sides together to two. So we're going to have two pairs and we're going to sew our curved edges. So this upper curved edge and this outer curved edge. You don't need to sew the two little straight edges because this one's caught in the waistband and this one's caught in your side seam. So those don't need to be sewn. So right sides together. We're going to sew this up. Whether it's a lining fabric or self-lined or however you choose to do it, you just want to put the right sides together of the two pieces so that you end up with a right and a left pocket. The other thing you could accidentally do, I suppose, potentially, is end up with two opposing pockets. But if you cut out both fabrics at the same time, like both outer fabrics and both lining fabrics, that won't happen. All right, so I'm going to sew these real quick, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and I'll come back and show you how to turn and clip it and apply it to our front of our pant. This is how the pocket looks sewn. Just a little stitching up here and the stitching around here. And then come in wherever you've got a curve and do the little clip up to, but not through the stitches on both sides. And then you've got this nice wide part that you can pull the whole pocket through. Once it's through, give it a good press. And then I went ahead and I top stitched along this top of the pocket. And look at how it kind of disappears. I like it. You're not gonna to be too noticeable, but it's there. So I top stitched the top of the pocket um, before pinning it on. So now it's pinned on. You can see here's, here's where my pocket is. And now I'm ready to just top stitch the other part. Now the pattern has on the pattern pocket, it has these two little circles and the same little circles are on the front of the skirt or the pant. 
and the pocket just matches up with those little circles like so. And then you have one over here on the side seam also. Little circle, little circle, and it matches up, and then that's where your pocket goes. So it makes it super easy. So don't forget to transfer your markings. On mine, because I did a slight, I did a slight alteration on mine, so I'm just gonna show you from the back. This is, remember how I took a little away from the center, the front, this is the pocket that shows. So that's gonna get trimmed away, but I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch it down first. So we're gonna, that's our next step. We're gonna top stitch down both pockets. After this, it's gonna go zoom, 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 super fast. The pockets are the most time consuming part of this whole garment. So after the pockets are done, we're gonna put right leg together, left leg together, um, sew the two legs to each other, put on the waistband, hem, like it's, and it's gonna go about that fast super quick. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other side done and then I'll show you how to put your legs together, right leg and left leg. Now that the pockets are on both legs, we're going to go ahead and put them together. Now the pattern has us only sew the inner um, seam here, front and back, and then they have you sew the U, which you certainly can do. I've been making pants so long I sort of have like my method that I always go to. So when I sew pants, I sew the whole leg together, front and back. Let me also say, if you are um, sewing this not on the serger, but on your sewing machine, you can do your 5 8 inch seam, press it open, and then do the zigzag on your seam allowance. Or, because these are such straight seams, you could easily do a French seam, a mock French seam, a flat felled seam, something like that, if you wanted to do a self-enclosed seam for these, because they're nice and straight. It would be very easy to do that sort of thing. If you're doing a flat felled seam, you have to choose whether to do the inseam or the outseam. You seldom will have a flat felled seam on both, so you need to pick which one you want to do flat felled on, but the others you could easily do French or mock French all the way around. Okay, so we're just gonna pin our two um, legs together, our front and our back, right sides together. Once they're pinned together, like so, we're just going to straight stitch them. And I'm, I've got one leg done, so I'm gonna just line this up so you can see. Boop. And when you are putting pant legs together, like this, okay, so here's my inseam. Here's my crotch, okay? Your crotch should not match front to back. They should be different, so let me just show you. See the difference in my crotch? See how my front ends here and the back continues on because I'm longer in the back. So they shouldn't match up. They should be different there and they're not gonna get sewn to each other. That's gonna get pressed open and sewn to the other leg. So we're just gonna sew our inseam and our outseam. And I surged mine. So I surged it together and what I did, cause I like a nice wide seam allowance in my pants. So I'm gonna open this to the inside really quickly. So I straight stitched my 5 eighths of an inch and then I just searched the edge together. And so here from the outside, this is how it looks. You can't tell at all. But a nice wide seam on pants or skirts is um, beneficial if you change sizes. So I can let this in or out much, more, much easier, much more easily because I have some extra seam allowance in there. And that's just wise. Gives you a little more room to play with. So I did, that, I did that for my inseam and my outseam. So here's my pant leg now, sewn together, completely sewn. Here's my pocket, top stitched on. And I went ahead and searched around the hem of the leg. So I'm gonna do that to both of them. So let me get the other one sewn real quick and then I'll show you how we put them to each other. We're getting really close to being done. So we have two pant legs, a right and a left. And I've got one wrong side out and one right side out. And I would recommend going ahead and pressing everything really nice at this point before your pants are even put together. Get all those seams pressed nice and flat. It just makes everything prettier and it makes it nicer to sew. So I'm gonna take the one that's right side out and I'm going to slide it into the one that's wrong side out so that we end up with right sides together. So the pant leg, I'm gonna have pant leg inside of pant leg with the inseam lined up like so. So here's my inseam for both pant legs. And when you do it this way, you end up with the backs together. I'm gonna to start at my center seam, the inseam, and put a pin in it. Make sure your seam allowances are all pushed. If you haven't pressed them open, if they're searched together or stitched together in a French seam or a mock French seam, push all those seam allowances towards the back. 
My side seams are also pressed that direction and we're just gonna pin this U around. If you're serging this, then you can just serge around this seam. If you're sewing it, straight stitch it and zigzag next to it. You could also do, because the um, crotch seam, that U, takes so much stress. Because the inseam takes so much stress, it's wise to um, reinforce that seam. So you can do a nice strong straight stitch and do a um, bias over it or zigzag the stitch to the seam together, something like that. Because crotches just take a lot of stress. We sit on them, this inseam. So we want to make sure it's nice and strong. So I have pinned my U all the way around. I have one pant leg inside the other and there's my little U and we're just going to straight stitch and zigzag that. And once that's done, we're on to waistband and hem and we're finished. So what I'm going to do, since I'm going to straight stitch that, I'm also going to sit the sewing machine. I'm going to take my two waistband pieces and they're just sewn together at the sides. So you end up with one continuous waistband. Here's my little seam allowances. We don't need to worry about finishing these seam allowances because it's all going to get enclosed inside that waistband anyway, like so. So go ahead and sew your waistband together at this point. And we we're, we're almost done. My pants are sewn together in the U all the way around, straight stitched and then serged. And you want to serge it so that you have about five, um, instead of five eighths, you have about a three eighths inch seam allowance. If you're zigzagging, you want to sew it and zigzag a little close to your straight stitch and then trim out a little bit. So you don't have that full five eighths inch just sticking up into your body. You do the same thing with an arm's eye. You don't usually leave the full five eighths inch in there. Then we're going to take our waistband. And for me, because I lengthened, the, I widened the back of my pants, I also widened the back of my waistband. So the front waistband and the back waistband, for me, are not exactly the same anymore. If you did no alterations, then they're exactly the same front and back, and you're going to just sew them together on the side seam. The pattern has you sew one side shut and the other side to leave a little hole open for fishing your elastic through that you have to go back and hand whip stitch closed, which works fine, and you can do that. I personally, instead of doing it that way, I close up my side seam completely and I leave the hole in this part of the pant where I'm sewing it up. So when I sew around my circle, I leave a little hole in this circle and then I can open up, fish my elastic through there and sew that circle shut and then serge all the way around it, which is how I'm going to do it. So we're just pinning our waistband on because mine was wider in the back than the front. I had to make sure and get my front and my back correct, which I did. So everything meet meets and matches up and then we do our center fronts do a couple more pins and then when I go to sew it in the back of my pant or on the side just not in the front where it's the most obvious I always leave the holes in the backs or the sides the only time you wouldn't do that is if it was like a wedding dress where everyone's staring at the back but you're not going to have an elastic in the back of a wedding dress most likely anyway so we're going to put our little waistband on and then I'll show you how I fish through my elastic I'm just straight stitching the waistband on right now. I'm not doing any serging. The serging's at the very end after I finished my elastic. I know you've seen me do this lots of times, but we're going to take our waistband elastic for your size and put a safety pin in one side. And then we're going to come to our waistband and I'm going to find, this is how it looks right now. It's pretty raw looking, but there's a hole in the back here where I didn't sew it shut there. You can see where there's no stitching. And we're going to put the elastic in the waistband part. So it's not attached. There's, it's, it's, the waistband is a little bit free in that one spot from the pants and from itself. And I'm just going to open up my waistband so I get inside there. I'm going to put my elastic inside the waistband. This again calls for an inch or an inch and a quarter weight um, elastic, I can't remember. And we're just going to fish it around. Now what I always do when I'm fishing my elastic is once I get it started, I pin down the tail of my elastic. So I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to pin it down to the inside of my pants so that I don't pull it through because the elastic is always smaller than the casing it's going in. And it's easy to pull that tail in and then you're out of luck. You've got to have the tail at the other end. So I'm going to just fish, fish, fish with my safety pin and you want to make sure you don't twist the elastic. You don't want it to roll and because of these um, the way the pants are made and because of like I'm so much smaller in the waist than I am in the hip um, I always do a couple little stitches after the elastics in and secure it in the way I want it so that it doesn't roll so I'll show you that we'll, we do that on the inside of our waistband 
just to keep the elastic in place and we don't have it folding over and folding in half. And you've probably had clothes like that where your elastic just gets crazy and runs around on you and it's frustrating. So once this is fished through, I'm going to straight stitch up that little hole. I'm going to stitch it together and then I'm going to go back around around the seam allowance and serge it. And the waistband's on and all that's left is the hem. And the hem for this, while I'm fishing, I'll talk to you about hems. You could do a blind hem. You could um, do a decorative hem. You can do a turned and straight stitched hem, which is what I'm going to do. Pretty straightforward, simple hem. And actually, um, because this is almost a beachcomber type pant, if you were doing this in a denim, you could even do a frayed hem, which would be super cute. So, and I also, with this big patch pocket, it would be so fun to do contrasting fabrics for your pockets. Like this is, um, I think this, this particular style, you could do so many creative things with it. Now, if you're uncertain about your elastic, like it tells you for your size, cut your elastic this length. And for me, it's always a little bit long um, because I wear plus size to fit my hip, but my waist is smaller. So I tend to measure my waist and whatever your waist measurement is, take away two inches for elastic. And that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb to get an elastic that's going to be comfortable to wear and fit you well because let's face it it's a casing you can make that elastic pretty stinking tight if you want to so here's my two ends so we're going to take our two little ends we're going to overlap it and we're going to zigzag back and forth on all the little ends to make sure it's nice and tight and secure make sure you didn't twist one make sure they're nice and straight and once that's done we can pull it to the inside and finish off that waistband so i'm going to do that real quick and then we'll finish our waistband so there it is it's sewn in and now we're just going to pull it in like that, so that's what it looks like. And this is the little spot that I have to sew back together. So I'm just gonna flip it around, pull it tight, and straight stitch that down. Make sure not to catch my elastic, if at all possible. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna pull on the elastic to make it go evenly around, like so. Look at how cute that's looking, it looks great. I'm gonna search this real quick. So I'm gonna come to my serger, which is sitting right here, and I'm just going to surge this seam allowance so that it doesn't fray. So all that's left is the hem now. I'm just going to show you and I'm going to top stitch down my elastic. So this is how it's looking. And now right here on these side seams where that little tiny seam is, I'm just going to top stitch down my elastic nice and flat. And that just keeps it from rolling. So I'm going to do it here on both side seams and I'm also going to do it in the center back because that tends to be where my elastic rolls the most. So I'm going to do that in those three spots to keep my elastic down and then I'm going to just top stitch in my hem and I'll show you my finished pants. I just tried them on. I'm going to insert a picture now of how they look and they fit great. I'm really pleased with everything. They fit exactly like they should for the pattern. My alterations were great. However, I don't think they're very flattering on and the reason is when you have um, a full hip like I do and the garment drops straight down from that full hip. It draws that nice wide line all the way down to the ankle and it cre it, the illusion that it creates is you are that wide from hip to ankle and it kind of creates a great big wide block and it's not very flattering. And what I usually do if I have a straighter skirt or a straight pant like this is I peg it in just a tiny bit. So it's still wide, but what happens is here's the hip instead of coming straight down and creating this block, it comes in just a little bit and all it does is it fools the eye and it makes the eye think not only is it narrower at the ankle but you're actually narrower at the hip now too because it's it's just an interesting illusion that it creates so i'm going to peg in the leg just a tiny bit at the bottom and i'm going to shorten it it's i took out two and a half inches and hemmed it an inch and a half and it's still longer than i wanted so i'm going to go ahead and hem it one more time up um, and peg it in and we're going to try it again. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute after I make those few alterations. So here are the pants. Altered. I know this is a crazy shot, but I wanted to just do this really quickly in the mirror so you can see this is my shape. This is how I look every day in my everyday clothes, in my jeans. I'm a plus size girl and I know it, but those pants that I just made make me look so much larger, many times larger than I really am. We're gonna alter them because the point is not to make myself feel bad in the new clothes that I made. 
All right, option one, I've taken the pant leg completely out, so this is how it looks. Just full length with no hem in it before any alteration. I was considering just pulling it in and making it a pant, sort of like that, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna put an elastic in it and see what I think of the elastic. So here it is with an elastic. And I kind of like it. I think it's kind of cute. It's a little hard. Okay, this pant leg's so big. You pull it so you can see. So that's sort of how it looks from the side. It's a lot more flattering, um, either longer with no hem or with a little elastic. Or, see, look at that. Look at how much slimmer this leg looks when I just taper it. What a difference. So I have to decide. Do I want to taper? or do I want the elastic? Just so you can see how wide the pant leg is, the finished width on this is about 35 inches. So it's just shy of a full yard around. And that's after I've already taken three inches out. So we're going to taper this a lot. I'm going to bring this in to about 20 inches. I'm going, and we'll see how that looks. So I'm just gonna take out the hem, baste it, and try it on and see how I feel about the look. So here's my alteration. I hope you can see the line. It doesn't show up real well, but what I have done, and can you see from here to here is going to be my new pant leg. I'm taking away all of this excess fabric. So it's going from 35 inches to 20 inches finished. And then I, instead of tapering all the way to the ankle, see I've straightened it out because what I think I'm going to do is make a nice little cuff at the bottom. I can always change it, um, but that's the plan right now. So I'm gonna base this in and see how it looks. Okay, here we are. It's just pinned up. It's been thinned out and I put a little cuff in it. I just think it's a lot more flattering. So I've taken in a lot on the leg. And once, if you decide to slim this leg, um, if you take only at the bottom, it's really full through the thigh. So I actually pulled out some in the thigh also, a little bit, but I didn't change anything up here. So options, options when you're sewing and trying to get a good fit. I think I prefer this leg. I just think it's a little more flattering. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one, finish it up and take some final pictures. So I made a lot of alterations. I took out a lot of width in the pant leg at the bottom. I decided to put in a little cuff at the bottom, so I changed it quite a bit. I'm much happier. I just think it's much more flattering. You can see if I tucked it in. Now, you can do it exactly by the pattern and get the cute wide leg, which may be perfect for your figure type. And I could see doing some fun things with this. It would be fun to do like a fun pocket down low, like a cargo pant. You could do some cute things. I did like the elastic, so I might try it again in a different fabric with maybe the elastic in the bottom. I thought that was pretty cute. See you next week for another fun video.